praise and your love in our lives. Amen. Amen. Hello. I'm Abraham. I want to tell you a little bit about who I am and how God used me and how I was able to have faith in one God. My father, Tetrar, my wife, Sarai, and my nephew, Lot, went to Haran. And while we were there, my father died. And then God came and he said... Abram, that was before God changed my name to Abraham. He said, Abram, I want you to go. I want you to go to the land where I am leading you. I want you to leave your family and your friends. You go and I'll bless you. I'll protect you. And your descendants will be unbelievably large in number. So I trusted God. We went to Cana, where God was leading us. We hadn't been there too long until a famine hit the land. And with the famine, we went to Egypt. And on the outskirts of Egypt, I realized, as I looked at my beautiful wife, Sarai, that once we were in Egypt, that the soldiers of the Pharaoh may well want to add Sarai to the Pharaoh's gathering of wives. So I said to Sarai, why don't you tell the Egyptians that you're my sister? Because if they know that I'm your husband, they will probably kill me and move you into the Pharaoh's harem. We agreed. And sure enough, when we arrived in Egypt, the Pharaoh wanted Sarai for his wife, one of his wives, and she became one of the wives. And they didn't kill me. In fact, they blessed me with a lot of gifts, as well as Lot, my nephew. After several months, a plague hit the Pharaoh's family, and the, fam and the Pharaoh realized that Sarai was my wife. He called me in, and he said, why didn't you tell me? I want you to take Sarai, your wife, and get out of here, but you can take all those things that I've given you. So we left, and we went back to Cana. Now, when we arrived back in Cana, Lot had gathered a lot of cattle and a lot of sheep and a lot of goats. So had I. So we agreed that we'd have to separate. He would take his animals and go one way to the east, and I would go to the west. We did that to preserve our family tradition. After we divided up, Sarai, my wife, realized, and I realized, she was not going to have children, or at least that's what we thought. So my wife, Sarai, said, why don't you take our servant girl, Hagar, and have a child with her? That way you'll have a descendant. So I did that, and we realized then that Hagar was expecting. When that happened, my wife, Sarai, and Hagar didn't get along very well. So Hagar left. And an angel, when she was out in the desert, said to her, I want you to go back and live with Sarai and Abraham. And she did. She came back and lived with us. And it wasn't too long after that that God came and said to me and to Sarai, that we were going to have a child. And he cha God changed my name to Abraham and Sarai's name to Sarah. And she had a child, and we call that child Isaac. When I was 100 years old, and Sarah was 90 years old, can you believe it? Well, once Isaac, our son, was born... Sarah said to Hagar, you need to leave. So Hagar took her son, Ishmael, and they went out into the desert. And that's where my son, Ishmael, grew up. And right after that, God really put me to the test in an unbelievable way. 
God said, I want you to take your son Isaac, this son that you love. I want you to take him to Moriah, and I want you to offer your son Isaac as a sacrifice to me. I couldn't believe it. This God who I had trusted and followed, I had gone wherever God wanted me to go. And lo and behold, take my son to Moriah. I did as God asked me to do. I took a couple of servants. We went to Moriah. I built an altar. I gathered some wood. And as I was ready to sacrifice my son, Isaac, all of a sudden, I looked over and there was a ram caught in the thicket. It was a ram that God wanted me to sacrifice other than my son, Isaac. Well, it was a wonderful moment. God said to me, because you have followed my wishes and you're willing to sacrifice your son, Isaac, I'm going to bless you. Your descendants will be greater than the stars in heaven. They'll be greater than the sand on the seashore. And God did bless me. And when Sarah, my wife, was 127 years old, she died. And then when I was 175, I died. And my sons Ishmael and Isaac buried me beside of my first wife, Sarah because I had married again and had six sons. I know here at St. Stephen's that you're on your journey from Ash Wednesday to Easter morning. And let me tell you, it's not always been easy. I've made mistakes to follow God, but I continued to have faith. And God has blessed me through my descendants. And God has blessed me, certainly, because I was the father of the Israelites, and God blessed me with descendants, one of which is Jesus. So the descendants have been a blessing to me and to you. And on your journey, you're following Jesus, one of my descendants, who became the Savior of the world, the Son of God. So in your journey during this Lenten season, May God bless you.
Give to your people the peace that passes all understanding and the will to live your gospel of mercy and justice through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. God, remember us in your love and teach us to pray. Our Father in heaven, heaven, hallowed be your name. Your, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Let us bless our God. 